Uh, we were in Spain together, and we served Mundaka. It was like six to eight feet, perfect, flawless. It was really fun. It was freezing cold, super windy. Me and Taylor and a bunch of other guys, but it's cool. It's cool because, you know, we served Pano together, and then on the same coin we go to serve um, Mundaka. S some similarities there, but not really. There's, the next question is, tell a story. Well, I'm going to tell a story. And uh, it's about this one day we were playing horse at Taylor Steele's house. And um, Taylor Steele did one of those, like, throw it off the backboard, bounce back, catch it in the air, lay up things. And Taylor's like, Knox Barry was like, I got this. I can handle. No problem. Sure enough, my brand new Acura was parked like 30 yards behind us. It's pretty far. I don't know, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. But Taylor, I think, I think his baseball influence came into the play a little bit because he threw this like line drive at the backboard. And the thing hit the backboard and came off the thing so hard, it flew right between his arms and just shot straight and landed right on the hood of my car and put a dent in it. He never paid for it either. And he's always in your face with all his Padres. Yeah, man, the guy from the Padres. It's like, dude, you know what? You really think I care? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. I want to take a shot at him so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think what he's doing for the Padres, he's, he's really into the, to baseball, and uh, uh, he always talks about you know hanging out with Trevor Hoffman and Brad Osmus and and the Padres trainers and you know what I, what I what I understand is I think he's bringing those guys water and cleaning off their jock strap and um, I, you know shining up bats and stuff like that you know they're 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 stoked on him because you know they apparently he's really good so Um, but I think, uh, mainly I think Taylor's a perfect example uh, for, for some kid who wants to be a professional surfer that has talent and puts his head down. And, and, I, and I believe that Taylor is, uh, he really enjoys what he's getting right now, which is great. Um, but I also believe that he's worked harder than anybody else to get there. I think uh, some of the guys were blessed with maybe a little bit more talent. Uh, Taylor had the talent but he just had to find it. And I think he believed in himself and other people believed him as well. And uh, it's a scary world out there because prof you know, professional surfing is not a team sport. And um, Taylor wouldn't be the, places, the place that he is now without the support that he's had, but he's had to do it pretty much on his own. You know? And uh, that's, I love that about him. You know? And uh, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to understand that when you watch someone surf as beautifully as he does, sure it's it's great, and you you know, yeah, that, that looks fun, but uh, the hours that he's put into it have been unbelievable, and you know, it's uh, I really would have, really would like to see him win a world title. And anyway, we Phil and I came down to go surfing at State Park one day, and it was drizzly and overcast, and it was probably very, it was like eight foot, just blown out, blown out peaks, but something that Phil and I just loved to surf because we knew no one would be out, so we came down here. 
and we saw this little kid who who looked like he had just gotten in a slap fight with a Bengal tiger and he had he wasn't smiling he was just all drenching wet and he had a wet towel hanging around him and we're just like hey you know hey dude how's the what's it like out there and he goes oh I didn't make it out but you know I, I, I really want to go out again and I go well we're piling back out you know if you guys you want to go out with us you can and and it ended up being Taylor and the determination that he that he showed was just absolutely just blew phil and i away because he was probably only 12 or 13 just a little kid he had this tiny board and it was extremely big and blown out so anyway he was ready to go charge again even though he didn't even make it out the first time by himself i mean there was nobody on the beach anywhere to be seen so we paddled out and that's the last time we saw last time we saw him that day as he got swept down the beach and uh we ran into him a couple days later and he was back out there and was just like you know that was pretty pretty impressive and Anyway, I invited him to come in the shop and said, you know, we'd do what we can to help him out. And that's how I got introduced to Taylor. And it really showed the determin to me. And I hadn't even seen him surf, and I wanted to just help him out because of the determination that I saw in his eyes and in his actions by just wanting to go out when it was miserable and blown out and, and huge and just the most adverse conditions you guys for. And he just wanted it so bad. And I said, that's a kid. I want to help this guy. You know, no matter what, again, I didn't know, if, you know, who knows he would end up being where he is today, uh, but you just got to love that determination and fight in a person. I think a perfect story, and possibly this is in the video, I'm not sure, but perfect story about that would describe Taylor's personality is when he went up uh, with Blue Angels, I think it was, on an airplane ride, and, uh, and they asked him if he was going to be able to take the G's and... You know, and, and uh, Taylor says, oh, yeah, bring it on, bring it on, you know. And the guy pulled a few G's and Taylor <laughs> passes out. But, <laughs> but that's a typical Taylor, you know, bring it on, you know, let's go for it. Uh, I think that describes his personality better than anything.